Welcome to the Jerry Anderson podcast, which today sees the presenter in both an insecure and at the same time lecherous mood. These two behaviours are strange bedfellows, but indicate that he may be on the verge of cracking up. The sooner, the better. Oh eight four five nine five 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 six seven eight. Uh, is that our number? Was that the whole number that I just gave? Oh eight four five nine five five five. Sorry. Well, why did you listen? See if I make a mistake. I, I was talking oh, to Emma. You were not. Emma was talking. Emma was mouthing something over to me, and I couldn't get what it was. What was it? I, I couldn't make out. I can't get her to mouth something to me. No. Go, go on. <laughs> I had no fun this weekend at all. Go get her to Emma. Go on, mouth something no, at me. Go on. No, no. no. Ask her to lean over. No. Come on, Emma. Go on, mouth something at me. <laughs> Any other thing. Go on. Go on. No. No. Go on, go on, go on, go on. <laughs> I enjoyed that. She mouthed. You didn't see what that was. She turned her back to you and mouthed something at me. And I know what she said. She said, My husband is asking for you. A lady tires of coils ennui and offers herself as a replacement. She feels that a woman's touch is needed on the programme as Emma and Janet seem defeated. I wish you would consider getting a female sidekick like Radio 1 and BBC 2 have on their shows. A female presence would add a great deal to your show. Sean Coyle often interrupts you and spoils your stories. Oh. You'd be telling a joke or a story which I haven't heard and he stops you. Just because he has heard it, he shouldn't interrupt you. You know, I'm always saying that to you. Half the time he sounds depressed and preoccupied with himself. He's got you in one. This occurs so often, I'm desperate for a change. He seems to enjoy only sports references, which I dislike. You always seem, you on the other hand, always seem to care about the listener's interests and needs. <laughs> for all your Radio Ulster needs, it's Radio Ulster. He's really got you wrong, haven't he? Hasn't he? She has. Oh, she? Oh, she? She. she. See, women, she? Un- see, women understand me. See, men like you don't like mm-hmm. me. Men don't like me. Women, but women know that underneath this... I'm not a man, by the way. Well, what are you? I'm just a person. You're a man. I'm not. I, I, if somebody said, are you a man or a woman, or a woman what would you say? I would say... Neither? Uh, no, I'm, I'm not a man. There's men. People have grown... A man I, I, is a man. No. A man is a, a male. You, you, you have grown into a wee man. <laughs> A wee compact man. You're a wee man. My mother used to always say... Do you remember that? She's, my, my mother would say, if we were walking along the street when I was a kid, she'd say, look at that man over there. I'd say, what man? That, that wee compact man. Ah. <laughs> well, are, you, are there are, any compact men anymore? Tell me, are you a wee low set man? Or a wee well set up man? No, a wee low set. There was wee low set men, yes, and there was wee well set up men, and then there was wee compact men. Remember we compact men that looked as if everything was all squeezed into yes, a one? Yes, that was, that was we barley men, we, <laughs> what, wasn't it? Yeah. But you, you're, you're a, we men that looked as if they should be taller and uh, the body was squeezed into a small body. Yeah. And they always had suits that were too tight, we compact men. And they always had kind of broad shoulders and, and, and bellies, remember? Yeah. As if they were all bursting out. What happened to those? They're all wearing track suits now. You can't see the light of a man now. All you can see, I seen a great man the other day with his belly hanging over his trousers. Do you know the way sometimes men... Remember a long time ago, men used to have trousers. And because they had a big, big belly, they had to really tie the belt on really tight to keep the trousers up. Disgusting looking. And actually, it's just like unbelievable. I mean, if they they have the belt on normally, the trousers fall down because the belly forces the trousers down. So what you have to do is just like a tourniquet. And the big belly's going. The holiday is upon us, with the accompanying riots and civil unrest, with many people desperate to leave the province that they love so dearly. However, the economic climate is not good, and many cannot afford to leave and don't want to march. The answer? A virtual holiday. Dear Puppet Chin, I listened with interest to Michelle's home holiday experiment. However, I see a glaring mistake in her choice of destination. If she'd chosen a virtual holiday at Ayanapa, she could party all night snort illegal substances, get arrested, and wake up at lunchtime beside a swarthy stranger in the back garden, then wolf down a full English all-day breakfast with baked beans. But being similarly cash-strapped myself this year, I have booked a virtual home holiday at a Swedish nudist colony. I haven't told my wife yet, but I'm sure she'll be delighted. Looking forward to it at some Connor Bradford. And when he goes to the nudist colony, what will he first see? What will he first notice about a nudist colony? Did you ever see? Did you ever go to a nudist beach? No. 
You must have done. No, you, I, you, I've walked past one in Portugal. That's, no. that's, that's what I'm saying. No, but I haven't, I haven't been on it. I know, but when you walk past, you're on it, right? No, you're not. So you can't no, help this it. Is but the you're way having out, a look, this aren't you? This is the way out the airport. There's only, there's only one man on it. Was he standing up? He was walking along the beach. Well, how? that's how you knew he was near the beach. No, we didn't know he was near the beach. Until you seen he had no speedos no, on. But, uh, and, and, and Joe said to me, Joe the... That man has no trousers on. Joe said to me, is your man naked? And I looked at him, I said, I don't know, I can't really see. And we stood, and I said, yeah, I think he is. So the, we didn't know it was a nudist beach. We thought this guy was just walking along the beach on his own, with no clothes on. There's one rule about nudist beaches, and I've been on a few of them. Now, there's one rule about it. No handsome man or beautiful girl is allowed on it. That seems to be the rule. So no, nobody's allowed on a nudist beach. You were there. I wasn't there as a nudist. I was there passing through, having a gleek, as the word goes. What would take you to a nudist speech? No, sometimes in the place like uh, like in Gran Canaria, OK? You have to there's, go to your way to get there. Yeah, there's certain places in Gran Why? Canaria. When, when you walk, Did you ever go to a place and just walk along the beach for miles? Yes. Well, there comes a part where it's a designated nudist speech. That's beach. right, uh, we'll have that experience. That's happens yeah, to you, you yeah, just yeah, walk yeah, through. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, you have yeah. to look, because all the nudists are standing up, so you get a good look at them. I think they stand up and they see you coming. And they stand up and put their hand on their hip. You know, like that. Mm-hmm. And they're kind of waggling their things at you. You know, right. not yeah. waggling, but, you know, the things are swaying, oh, right, right, swaying right, in the right, breeze. Right. Oh, right. And, I, you know, you look at this and you go, I wonder what's the point of them standing up? And then you realise that they're standing up so that you can have a look at them. And then the second thing you realise is that they're all very ugly and bad shape and fat and horrible. And you're looking around and you say, hold on a minute, in all the... Photographs and brochures and naturist uh, magazines I see, these are all slim young women and handsome young men. They must be all having their lunch. Here's a note of complaint. Dear Mr Anderson, St Patrick did not make Catholics, he made Christians. Pedant. Mm -hmm. Also, he is supposedly buried in Church of Ireland graveyard in Down Patrick. Your language is good for a while, now it is back in the gutter. We do not like foul language. It's a man complaining about my vocabulary. And rightly so. I think so, yeah. You're a Puritan too, aren't you? Oh, rightly so. I know, it's, it's difficult for me. It's graceful at times. Mouth like a sewer. Mm-hmm. Did you see the Murdoch's been interrogated yesterday? <sighs> Did you Aye, watch it? I watched some of it. It's, it's very, very good. Mm-hmm. I think uh, Rup- uh, James Murdoch, I think he was, um, he was the model for the talking clock. No, but did you see, isn't it the most amazing thing that two, those two men have run, have rung, run, run, a, a huge organisation, and they have no idea what goes on in it. Yeah. It's like going into a chip shop and saying, have you any chips in the fellow saying, oh, I'm not, not entirely sure. Um, I haven't been in this chip shop for a long. Um, well, I got chips here in 2008. Did you? What did you get? Uh, I got a fish supper. Mm-hmm. Well, I nope. didn't come here to 2009, so I can't answer for the people who were there. Are you sure you got that? Do you have a receipt? Yes, I have, and I had it. Hmm. But there's, look, there's a fryer there. Look, and there's fish and there's chips in there. I don't know. I'm not sure if I've got any chips or not. I can't answer that, to be honest with you. But I'll get back to you. The Murdoch hearings were instructive to all students of body language. The presenter, of course, has long graduated from the School of Insincerity, having studied at Nolan's Knee, and consequently likes nothing better than to pass on his knowledge to others less fortunate than he. Do you see what I've learned from the hearings yesterday? Ask me a question. Any question. Uh, what age are you? Over 60. You see, the pause. Ah, the pause is good, isn't it? Uh, it's very Apparently, good. Uh, I was talking to... No, sorry, I wasn't talking to anybody. I was reading that uh, a behavioural expert uh, suggested that if you don't answer a person right away, it means you're in charge, right? It, it, it donates... That's, that's what Nolan does all the time. Do you know when something horrible happens to you and uh-huh. you tell Nolan about it? Go on, tell me about something horrible that happens to you. Go on. Well, Let's no, say you, you cut your leg in a mincer. Go on. I, I cut off four fingers in a mincer last night. Only four. Yeah, yeah, four. It was very, very painful. How did you feel? Well, I, I was in, I was in shock immediately, and I, I couldn't feel the pain, but I knew I cause awful damage to my hands. I noticed my fingers missing. And Four. 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 <sighs> and you don't sigh. 
There's been just one left. Yeah. What are you going to do with it? Going to raffle it. But there are worse things that can happen to a man when the dimming of the day grows apparent and inexorable. I have discovered, or I think I have discovered. That's a good pause there, you're learning. Yeah. It's a good pause. I, I listened there because it, it, you dried up. Yes. And I went, this is going to be good. So I listened, you had my attention. Yes. I, Go ahead. I think it's another sign of ageing, getting old. Yeah. What, what is? This is what I have discovered. What is you know, it? the first sign is that you, you can't finish a fish supper. Oh. That's yeah. the first sign of ageing. You mean you throw away half the chips? You, yeah, you say... Oh, you well, can't finish the fish. You say to your wife, will we get a fish supper between us? <gasps> oh, that's shit. That's it. a bad sign. You mm-hmm. see, that's, the, that's a sign. You say... You when know, was the I'm last like, time you had a fish supper and ate it on the way home? A fish supper? And oh, ate it on the way a home. full fish supper? Yep. Oh, no. I, know, I know you used to do it. Oh, no, not a full fish supper. Of course you would. No, I would either... No, um, you'd, you'd, no you'd, what, you'd get a fish supper and... I never uh, asked, no. No, Was you'd it? have the fish in one hand and, and, and you'd be eating that, you know, like a like a, like a nice pup. And then you'd just dip in and eat the chips at the same no, time. that's too much. You'd hold the fish. You don't get a fish supper. No, it just shows you you never did that. I did you that. Get, you you excuse me of lying again. You get a fish and a couple of chips or you get a couple of sausages, as I used to do, and a couple of chips. <sighs> if the soldiers don't steal them. See? Or something, whatever. But you never get a fish supper. But another other sign that I have discovered now of ageing is go on spit it out I could I could I could refuse a packet of crisps oh, who ever thought that they would mm-hmm. come mm-hmm. if somebody said do you want a packet of crisps there uh, uh, no thanks I could say ah, yeah. you or see. somebody offered me say, do you mm-hmm. want to know where people offer you a crisp do you want a packet of crisps yeah, I could say I could say no as an exercise in comparison, we hold up two Northern Ireland icons and compare them. Evan McCann and Joe Mahan represent all that's good and wholesome in Northern Ireland. The presenter, of course, has gone the other way. I think he's beginning to enjoy himself. He's enjoying being Eamon McCann. Well, you see, that's a sign of contentment. I think so too as well. And it's, I, 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 well, Someday I, I, you will I, enjoy I quite yourself. I like this Eamon, this, 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 this new, older, wiser Eamon McCann. Do you know why? Because I, I think I know the reason why he likes why? himself now. And I'm not saying this is a negative thing, it's a positive thing. Because Eamon has never sold out. All the people, all the tubes, all the people who went into Parliament and, and took the king's shilling, he never did that. And he was always his own man and he always said what he thought. And he realises now that he has never, ever let the people down. And he's proud of that. Mm. And he's revelling in it now. He's revelling in it. Because arms. he can say whatever he likes. I, I, I love the use of the arms. Yes. And, 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 and putting the hands behind the bald head and caressing <laughs> caressing his scalp. Caressing the words <laughs> as well. <laughs> okay, just for benefit uh, of the listeners, uh, as an exercise in comparison. But there's a call on too. I know. I can't take it yet. I want you to say the following words as Eamon and then as Joe. To see what the difference is. The words are this. Keep up the good work. I really enjoy your show. Now, first of all, as Eamon. Keep up the good work, Jerry. I really enjoy your show. Now, as Joe Mahan. Studio Joe. Uh, yes, Studio Joe. Keep up the good work, Jerry. I really enjoy your show. It's pretty sinister, isn't it? Isn't it's it's that? scary. I, but Joe, it scares me. I, I love your show, Jerry. <laughs> but you see, that's nearly... Liam Neeson. It is. Neeson. It's what I do. Yeah. I will find you. And I will kill you. There's a call on two. I haven't time to take it. You I'm going f- to play. But there's four minutes left on the programme. That's just enough time to play one record, but not enough time to talk to someone on the phone. Believe me, it's what I do. It's what I do for a living. I will find you, and I will kill you. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Back tomorrow. <laughs>